Hi everybody, my name is Anne. Thanks for joining me on Art on the Creek. We are here on Halloween. Woo! <laughs> Happy Halloween, everybody. Thanks for joining me in my home studio in Parker, Colorado. I am really excited that you're here because I hope I have a treat for you. Today is kind of a bonus video and I've just finished the Disney Villain Challenge that I started this year for the first time. Some of you were able to participate and I know a lot of you wanted to, but for some reason or another didn't get around to it this year. That is fine. You can do this anytime, anywhere, any place. Today, I want to share with you, though, my own interpretations of the prompts that I came up with. So if you're ready, let's go meet some villains. <laughs> Here we go. Well, I hope you're as excited as I am to take a look at all of these. And I'm going to give you guys a heads up ahead of time. Chances are I'm going to get a childhood memory triggered and <laughs> things will be, will remind me of something that just scared the daylights out of me as a kid. And I'm probably going to share those stories with you. So get ready, go get a cup of coffee, get some popcorn. This will be a fun one, I hope. I want to talk to you first before I open this about some of the supplies that I used. This particular book, I love it. It is the Bee Aqua Bee by uh, Royal and Langnickel, I think is the parent company that makes these. Um, this is 100% cotton watercolor paper. This particular size is eight and a half by 11. Each page is, is gently perforated, so they're very easy to remove. So you can paint eight by tens very easily on here. And it is, like I said, 100% cotton paper. Very easy to work with. I love this double spiral binding. It's very easy to use. And um, with this black cover, it's very, very thick. This cover is, is almost three millimeters thick, definitely at least two. I don't know what point uh, chipboard this is, but it's really very nice. It's got a matte finish. So I was able to paint on here, Disney Art 2023. This is a Dale Rowney um, acrylic ink and then I outlined it with the gold Posca pen. First, I, I did white Posca pen, didn't like the way it worked, and then so I went in with that De La Rowney ink. So that is what I did with the cover. When I outlined the drawings, um, the first thing I did was I printed off a picture of the frame, and I will put a link to that if I can find it. I will put a link to that in the description. I was trying to think if it's uh, royalty free or not, and I don't know. Um, so at any rate, if you do if you do use that and you decide to sell it, you might have some issues. But um, using the the frame was something I wanted to have uh, something that would tie all of the characters together because they're obviously all from very different movies. When I did outlining, the first pen that I used was this one, and it is a Zig soft tip flexible tip liner with permanent ink. I really like this pen. It's Zig Kuretake, uh, broad tip and a medium tip. Oh, I'm sorry, it's not Zig, it's Zebra. Um, I ran this one dry. And uh, then I used this one, which I dearly love. It's by Pentel. They have many different cases for it. And this is an actual brush tip. Those are filaments that form the point of a brush. And you load this with ink cartridges. So I love this pen and the ink is permanent ink. So this is very wonderful, very easy to use for ink and wash. And you really have a lot of control, a lot of range on the width of your line. This is also a flexible nib pen that I used. This particular one is by Superior and it is lovely. I started using it at the end because I had uh, gone through all the ink on those two. For the white highlights, most often I use this guy. This is a, uh, a manga liner. And I believe this came with an art, subscri art subscription kit. It's an extra fine point. Basically, it's acrylic paint. It's just a paint pen. So it does have a very fine tip to it. You can write a very fine line. In fact, I will show you how There you go. 
my signature. It's pretty, pretty, pretty narrow in the tip. Um, I really enjoyed all of these supplies. Um, the watercolors that I used, I used a set of Sennelier watercolors, the 12 plus six set. And I also used um, some gouache. I have Holbein plus, I was mixing up some student grade gouache that I made some discoveries about and I'll talk about those when I get to them. And I also used um, uh, Van Gogh watercolors because the point of a challenge, the point of a sketchbook is simply to have fun. You don't want a challenge to stress you out. You don't want to strive for perfection every single time. A sketchbook is for practice. And so for me, this is the equivalent of, I get a gold star on my chart because I practice my piano every day between this lesson and the next lesson. That's it. That's all. And, and that's the kind of devotion I want you to give to an art challenge. Don't get, don't sweat it if it doesn't turn out the way you want it. Uh, some of these really were uh, utter failures for me, but I posted them anyway because it's what I came up with. And that's the other element. You don't have to post anything on social media if you don't want to. Um, our challenges are designed that way so that you can do things with a group of people. But you know, right here on Art on the Creek, we're just one big happy family. So I am very happy to create any challenge that you like. And we can just do that right here amongst ourselves and talk about it. And we don't have to post anything at all if we don't want to. So without further delay, let's go ahead and get into this then. I really like this uh, journal. As I was telling you, it has this vellum sheet in the front and the back so that this chipboard won't rub off and ruin your art. So that's very, very nice. And in fact, when I got it, there was a little bit of smudges on here, but I did erase that. First up, we have the Big Bad Wolf. Let's talk about all of their flaws. What is it that makes them a villain? <laughs> I've got him in the magic mirror and all of these are in the magic mirror. That's what I traced. And then everything else I just drew freehand and I did everything in pencil first and then I inked it. And um, in some cases where the animal or whoever it is or the villain is extending beyond the frame, I got a little bit confused. And that's why this looks like this because I had him all done. And then I decided that the frame would be a good way to, to unite all of these. And I just went ahead and drew this whole part. So, you know, that my bad, but that's okay. It's transparent, it's here, it's fine. But see, it's a journal, so that's okay. Big Bad Wolf from the movie, The Three Little Pigs. And his flaw, his character flaw, I think is just that he's a bully. Um, of course, you could also argue that he was hungry and he's a wolf, but uh, his character flaw that makes him a villain is he is a bully. And he did get his comeuppance in the end quite literally. <laughs> uh, the Evil Queen from Snow White. Her character flaw was vanity, which is why we have the magic mirror here. I loved painting this one and I do love drawing her. She's the one, you guys, she's the one that gave me nightmares. When I was very, very young, we lived in a duplex in Denver. And I remember sitting at the front door with the screen closed but the door open and I could hear people walking up the street it was like a flagstone sidewalk and I could hear people walking up the street everyone wore heels then it was normally women walking up and down the street because it was during the day but um, if you left your house you you did you definitely got dressed up you didn't wear tennis shoes so I could hear people walking up and down the street and I was convinced one day that one of those people was the witch the wicked witch and she was coming to get me and I remember I froze I couldn't move from the front door and I remember hearing my mother call me and I couldn't come and of course she came and picked me up and I don't remember why she you know what she wanted or anything but I'm sure she thought I was crazy I was um, too young to really voice what was going on in my head I remember I was uh, probably around three two or three years old I've got some pretty vivid memories so yeah that was it that was in her duplex she scares me to death she was a source of many nightmares and then we have Chernabog. He is from Fantasia. And this is the only one that I used a different pen to outline with. I used a uh, alcohol marker on this one. And the reason that I did that is because he has such an art deco feel that I really wanted that extreme graphic nature. And um, I can tell you using the um, uh, alcohol marker on this paper was not as fun because it, it leaches very easily because this paper is very absorbent. Um, so yeah, this is Chernabog. He's the the very end of Fantasia. I did love that movie Fantasia and I remember going to see it in the theaters. Um, I remember sleeping through some of the parts but I did like him and I thought that he was pretty cool. 
Next, we have Stromboli. Oh, well, his, sorry, his character flaw, he's Satan. So what are you gonna do? He's pretty much got them all. <laughs> Str Stromboli. His character flaw, I think, is greed, uh, wealth, power, anything that would come with that because he wanted Pinocchio all for himself, of course, and he wanted to make money off of him. So um, yeah, that whole island of, of lost boys or, or uh, yeah, where they turn into donkeys, scary stuff, very terrifying movie. And I just noticed that the picture reference that I used, I didn't even realize it, but these are like body parts hanging back here. It's, they're puppets, but you know, Pinocchio is a puppet. So these are just parts and it's just really disturbing. So <laughs> Stromboli, the, the puppet master, um, that is him. And all of these so far are done with uh, Sennelier watercolor. Next, we have the Headless Horseman. Now, I adored this movie. I really always loved The Adventures of Ichabod and uh, Mr. Toad. I loved that movie. I, I do like um, Toad, Frog and Toad. I like all of those stories. Bing Crosby was big in our house. And of course, he did the voice of Ichabod Crane. And it was just uh, such a wonderful feel. I really like this movie. And it's a good spooky story for Halloween. So... Um, his villainous character, I guess, is uh, Revenge, coming back from the grave, maybe? Um, not really sure. I would say that's true. Captain Hook. Ha ha! From Peter Pan. He, I didn't realize until much later that the actor who voices Peter Pan is also the one who voices the father of the children in Peter Pan. And his character flaw, I think, is, uh, again, power, greed, um, whoever can rule Neverland, uh, that is Peter Pan. And of course he has the alarm clock in the, the, the alligator to contend with, but he was very fun to do as well. Captain Hook. Maleficent. Oh, she was so evil. Uh, she, of course, wanted to be the one, the only one that was considered uh, to be the beauty, the queen, the 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 one to rule. And uh, she did not want Prince Philip to win this battle. So this is right when she says, now you shall deal with me, O Prince, and all the powers of hell. So she just summons this larger than life persona and becomes a dragon. And this is Maleficent. I really like the new version, the Maleficent with um, Angelina Jolie, because I like learning about what made Maleficent the way that she is. So that was, that's really kind of fun. Cruella de Vil. Oh, you know, a lot of these female villains are really just mean girls. <laughs> they just want to be the most fashionable, the most beautiful, the most, uh, the, the, the one at the top of the pack. Ha, no pun intended, but that's what Cruella wanted. And here's uh, one of our little puppies. I believe this is probably Roly Poly because I love him so much. It might be Lucky. I can't remember which one has the, the red collar. But anyway, remember the footprints in the snow when they are pretending to be Labradors? That's this scene. She's looking out of her car and uh, trying to uh, trying to find those puppies. And she cannot figure out who, why all these Labrador puppies are walking along. This one. Lady Tremaine. This is from Cinderella. Cruel, cruel woman. The quintessential evil stepmother who only wanted her own children to receive the glory and anyone else, any other children can certainly be treated as less than. I really did not like her um, because she was so mean to Cinderella. The scene where she puts the key in her pocket and pats her pocket. Oh, horrible, horrible, horrible person. And actually, she looked like a relative that I was, I was kind of afraid of. So <laughs> that didn't help matters much. Okay, next we have the Queen of Hearts. And I, you know, she was never really all that scary. I just feel like her, um, her, her flaw, her character flaw is um, that she just throws tantrums. And she's impatient, I guess. Um, kind of like Baruch Salt a little bit in Willy Wonka. But um, this is where I dropped something, by the way. So I just kind of put a little design over it. But when I was drawing her, I realized, oh, she looks just like Fred Flintstone, except for she's a woman. So that was a realization that came to me for this one, for Queen of Hearts from Alice in Wonderland. Then we have Cy and Am. And I do have a fun story about this one. Now, Peggy Lee was another singer, musician uh, that was really popular in our house growing up. We had all these records. My parents were 
serious um, audio files and we had records from just about every genre and that certainly is handed down to me. I've got a CD collection, yes, a CD collection that um, that expands several uh, several shelves and cases. So all genres. Anyway, Peggy Lee. We, in fact, we even played her at our, our, our wedding reception. Not this song though. <laughs> when I was uh, coming home, we had gone shopping and um, I must have been maybe four or five years old. My parents bought me this record. This We Are Siamese, if you please. I cannot sing, but you know, I want you to have this memory as well. So here's Lady watching the cats come out and they were just so mean and they just thought everything was there. Again, kind of kind of mean girls. They just thought everything was theirs and, and the people were there to serve them. Well, I wanted that song because I really loved it and I thought it was so cute. Well, on the back of that song was a horrible howling uh, uh, song that was from the dogs from when they're in the pound. So I ran into the house. It was dark. My parents were behind me. I put that on the turntable and I put it on and I put the wrong side up. I put the howling side up and oh my gosh, I was terrified. I felt like something was touching my back. I was afraid to move. That was my big, my big defense mechanism was to freeze <laughs> when I was a kid and I got scared. Um, but yeah, the howling song on the back side. I wasn't a fan of that one. And um, I did make sure that, um, that my parents were in the room whenever I played that song because it was terrified me forever. And I learned this year when I was doing some research on these, you know, trying to jog my memory, Peggy Lee sang that song, the We Are Siamese, if you please. Peggy Lee sang that song as well, and I didn't know that. So that was kind of fun. Next, we've got Jungle Book, Ka. And when I, whenever I see Jungle Book, anything about Jungle Book and um, the Rudyard Kipling story, I am reminded of very dear family gatherings. So this must have been shown pretty regularly when our family was together. I know that um, CBS showed the magical world of Disney. And I want to say it was Sunday evenings, but I'm not sure. It might have been Saturday evening. At any rate, The Jungle Book was one that was shown quite often. And I have a lot of good memories with relatives that I dearly loved watching these movies. So even though that Ka his only his, he's a he's an uh, a villain because he's hungry i guess i don't know he's he's trick he's a trickster there you go because he wanted to hypnotize mowgli um but he was kind of he was voiced by winnie the pooh i mean how how scary can he be right now we have the problem i ran into <laughs> this is actually prince john he's not in the challenge but um in my memory of what i was doing when i uh, was painting these along i thought oh yes prince john i'll do prince john but no, I didn't do Prince John, but this is that great line of Peter Ustinov's when he says, mommy, and he's pulling on his ear. Um, this was a mistake to do. So it's in there. It's extra. The one that I meant to do was the Sheriff of Nottingham uh, because, 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 because there he is. I did him in gouache. Um, actually, I think he is gray in, uh, in the cartoon, but I didn't have enough gray on my palette. All of these are sketchbook pieces, and that's the kind of thing you can do in your sketchbook, is you can change colors, you can uh, experiment with techniques. What I really liked about this one actually was working on this gouache background. I did wet on wet, and then dry on top of that um, with gouache. I've never really done a lot of wet on wet with gouache, and this section up here really worked well. So see, that's what I do these challenges for, is for these little moments of victory. <laughs> but Sheriff of Nottingham, who also, the actor also voiced Mr. Haney on uh, Green Acres. Love the character. Sheriff of Nottingham, of course, greed. That is his character flaw, is greed. And Prince John, I don't know. Um, I don't really remember his character too much, but uh, I don't know, cuteness? No. I What? He's... Uh, He's a royal, and I guess that he, um, entitlement probably is what his character flaw would be. But he's a bonus. And then we go to Madame Mim. Okay, now this one, I don't remember this movie too well. In fact, I only recently watched it um, within the past year. I know that it's Sword in the Stone, right? Is that correct? Let me double check. Yes, Sword in the Stone. And that she is the one that is kind of trying to prevent... Uh, the kid, I don't know his name, I'm sorry, from uh, the one who's working with Merlin to go through his uh, his growth that he needs to go through. Is it the young Prince Arthur to be King Arthur? I don't know. I really don't know the story. I'm sorry. What I do know about Madame Mim is that um, she's a trickster. She just likes to, to, uh, to cause trouble. She's a troublemaker. 
and that's what makes her a villain in this case. And um, the, her animation style really reminds me of the Saturday morning cartoons that I watched when I was uh, a young child and on through my teenage years. Um, so yeah, I that's Madame Mim. There you go. And I had fun with this one because I really enjoyed drawing in the the background. I just kind of did that freehand. That was a lot of fun for me to draw those rocks. And let's see who's next. Okay, this one. I can't tell you about what her uh, her character flaw is because I've never really seen the movie. This is Madame Medusa from The Rescuers. Now, I do know that The Rescuers are mice and that one of them is voiced by either Ava or Zsa Gabor. And I think I know the, the male, I, I kind of remember like the, the discussions about the movie when it came out, but um, I never really saw it. So I was at that age where I was probably more interested in boys than I was in Disney. But many of you love her and love to hate her. So <laughs> tell me in the comments, uh, who is your favorite Disney villain? And um, if it's one of these that I don't know very well, you know, tell me more about her. What was it that made her so terrifying for you? Because these villains really had a lot of power over me as a child. This one, in particular, the Heffalums and Woozles, when Pooh, poor Pooh, I loved Pooh so much, and when he has this fever dream, that was so powerful for me to see because I used to have those fever dreams when I would get really, really sick. I had, uh, there were a couple years of my life when I got um, some really bad, I'm going to say colds because they were just viruses, but I would get, I got high fevers with that and then I would uh, get very, very I would hallucinate. My my uh, my stuffed animals were spinning in my room and I felt so good after I saw this movie actually because it made me think that I was normal. <laughs> because I was trying to explain that dream to my parents and um, they had never experienced that. So I remember they were talking to the doctor about it. Of course, he said it was fine. Don't worry about it. But Winnie the Pooh has fever dreams and they're heffalumps and woozles. So they don't, they want to steal his honey. And um, that is... Uh, what do you call it? Coveting. That is their, that's their sin is they covet Pooh's honey. So there you go. Me and Pooh have that in common in addition to a honey belly. <laughs> and then we get into the new age of Disney, which was just fabulous. Um, when they started using a lot of uh, a computer animation, I really love Beauty and the Beast. And this is Gaston, of course, and we all love to hate him because vanity is his sin. He is very vain. He's into himself and he thinks he is God's gift to women, particularly Belle. So this is Gaston. Next we have Ursula. Ursula is, uh, she wants power and the way that she gets it in this movie is to take Ariel's voice. And here is Ariel signing the contract so that she can sing, keep singing, and her voice will go into the shell, and then Ursula can have powers and uh, trick Eric into marrying her instead of Ariel. Ta-da, oh, Aladdin. Aladdin had the movie, uh, of course, the movie was Aladdin, rather, and then the characters that were in it really were larger than life. The genie is, of course, one of my favorites. This one's done in gouache also. Jafar very, very devious and sneaky. And I think those were his big character flaws. He wanted his own type of power and he manipulated the, um, the Sultan and uh, the world around him. And he uh, ultimately became consumed by that, which is true of many, many villains in history. Scar from Lion King. This is where I mixed the gouache with some, uh, uh, student grade gouache and it really I mixed professional and student grade and that student grade the streakiness really showed up but um, other than that I really enjoyed painting Scar he was a lot of fun that was so hard for me to watch because of course you know we had our own children by then and showing them Lion King when we when Scar actively kills Mufasa I mean that's that was hard that was really hard for me to watch we didn't make a big effort to explain it to the kids. We just let them ask questions. And of course, no questions needed to be asked because we all knew that Scar was an evil, evil person, power hungry. He was power hungry uh, 
finally Hades, not finally, but next, <laughs> Hades. This is from the movie Hercules. I don't really remember this movie too well because we had our third uh, child by then and uh, she was a little infant and um, I was more focused on that. I do remember that we took the kids to see this at the drive-in theater, which that tells you we still had a drive-in theater. I kind of remember the music, but I know that this was voiced by Woods, James Woods, and I really loved his sense of humor, and um, I love that one joke, is my hair out? Is it, is it still going? It, because his hair is made of flames. Really funny. This is when I really like that Disney started to put in, um, actually back with, uh, with Beauty and the Beast and uh, Lion King also, but Disney put, started to put in a lot of jokes that the adults would enjoy as well. So, of course, Hades, once again, he's got pretty much all of the sins. <laughs> Next, we have the Emperor Zerg. This one I absolutely loved doing. This one I also outlined in the alcohol marker to make him that uh, larger-than-life feel, kind of like Chernabog. This one has a special place in my heart because it is my grandson's favorite villain. He's very much into Toy Story right now. He's three years old. And uh, the Emperor Zerg, of course, is Buzz's um, arch nemesis and power. Power would be his sin. Now we have Oogie Boogie. This one was great. When I first saw Nightmare Before Christmas, I felt that it was wrong, that you shouldn't confuse Santa and Halloween. And I, I was just so, so concerned by the outcome that this negative potential outcome that this movie would have as a parent of young children it, it didn't have any negative out effect at all, it, no negative outcomes. In fact, um, these are all characters that you can really love and, and appreciate. And in fact, this one was the most like a Broadway show tune than, than any of them. Perhaps Belle, uh, Beauty and the Beast was like that as well. But all you could, you could probably argue that for all of these. But this particular story in the Tim Burton style was so magical and so wonderful. And I loved the stop action puppets um, and Oogie Boogie was one of those. And I really liked his, uh, his torturous device and uh, how he, he was the source of all the nightmares. He's kind of like the, I thought he had a little bit more power than Jack in a way, the Pumpkin King. But anyway, Oogie Boogie. And now we have Syndrome. This one is from The Incredibles. And he is uh, perhaps jealousy, pride, wanting all the power. I remember that he wanted Mr. Incredible to notice him and believe that he was the great one. So Syndrome decided to, to take all of that energy and make it into something evil. And then they have their epic battle. But this is Syndrome from The Incredibles. And next we have King Candy. Now this one, I pixelated the frame because fortuitously, um, pixel art just happened to be pretty popular at the moment that I was doing this one. And I'm sure it's still out there on the internet. You can find an awful lot of it on social media. Um, but uh, this was a lot of erasing because I drew the grid on and then I went with Posca pens to do the frame. And I really wish that there was an easier way to do it because my hand hurt all day the next day. <laughs> but King Candy was the, the glitch, the bug in the, the computer game um, from uh, uh, Wreck-It Ralph. And it was just cute. It was just a really great movie at the time it came out because it was that great tapping into that era of when uh, you're old enough to remember when video games first came out, if that was part of your childhood. So this actually worked for our older kids and our youngest um, because it was uh, very new and modern for her and very nostalgic for them. So I really like this movie as well. Next, we've got Dr. Facilier. And this one has also has a special place in my heart because it is from my granddaughter's favorite movie, Princess and the Frog. And I didn't really appreciate that movie too much when it came out, but as it went on, I really did appreciate it. And I love the mysterious voodoo that is involved with Dr. Facilier, or that he's involved with rather. And I feel like his, uh, his impetus for being a villain is that he is the ruler of that underworld of voodoo magic. And um, just like Hades and, uh, and Chernabog, he is kind of the king of all of his, his underworld. So power, power of the living is what he would like, I believe. And next we have Claude Frollo. This is from The Hunchback of Notre Dame. 
he was just a nasty, evil person. <laughs> I don't really remember his role all that much, to be quite honest with you, but I do remember the movie. And I remember, wasn't it Demi Moore who played, um, gosh, is it Esmeralda? Is that her name? I think it's Esmeralda. I'll put a little text up if I'm wrong. But anyway, there you go. He was the bad guy. I think he kept uh, he kept the hunchback locked up in the tower, maybe. I don't really remember the movie all that well. And of course, I don't know the story all that well. This was probably one of the, the not quite so popular movies by Disney, but um, it, was, uh, it was definitely part of our VHS library. All right, now I'm gonna put a piece of paper in here because there's one on the back of here that I don't want you to see just yet. I ran out of pages and had to go to the back. So this one is Randall, voiced by Steve Buscemi in Monsters, Inc. And he was just manipulative and uh, he was quite a stinker and wanted to twist the nightmare world back to him. Um, I really enjoyed him and I liked, this actually came about because of an accident, which is a, which is a really neat lesson that, that uh, you can glean from things like this when you're doing challenges. When I was doing the inking, I accidentally made this line. I intended for him to be completely behind the frame but I accidentally made that line and I did the inking before I painted. So then I realized when I was painting up here that I had put him in front of the frame here, but in back of the frame down here. And then luckily, because he is a chameleon, I was able to make the frame start to turn into Randall. So that worked out really well. Now, his name is Sean Yu from Mulan. He looks a little bit like suede because I had to go over him so many times. Oh my gosh, you guys, he gave me so much trouble. I was using a student grade watercolor on here and it did not mix well, which is why we have a lot of this. But it's kind of cool because now he does look like suede. I went over him in a very thin layer of gouache. And he, of course, is um, the villain in Mulan. He is looking for uh, uh, to take over the country, the land. And um, so uh, power and land is what he's looking for. And as I was drawing him, I realized, boy, he, Disney got kind of simple. But Mulan has simple meaning the artwork wasn't all that involved. Mulan has some really great songs in it, and it's a great movie, and I really do love it. I also like the live action of that one. Next, we have Sykes. Now, funny enough, when my dad would make a mean face, he looked like <laughs> Sykes. <laughs> this is from Oliver and Company, um, which the only thing I really remember about that movie, to be honest with you, is uh, Billy Joel. He played one of the dogs. Um, and I think were Cheech and Chong in that one too? Maybe Cheech. I don't know. It was back when it was really kind of, uh, and, and it still is, um, a kind of a badge of honor to be a big actor or a voice and to become an animated character. Um, Sykes, of course, he was a villain. I cannot remember the story of Oliver on the top of my head. Um, and in fact, I kind of have a fondness for him because I feel like this is my dad teasing me uh, because he could make a really grumpy face that was really pretty cute. So um, sorry, Sykes. I kind of like you because to me, you remind me of my dad. <laughs> and now for the grand finale, the one that I was hiding from you is the Sanderson sisters. This movie, Hocus Pocus, has become a cult favorite. And it's so funny because when it first came out, it wasn't that great, but now it's fabulous. And of course, the meme, a muck, a muck, a muck from Sarah Jessica Par Parker is very, very popular. And Bette Midler had the best she was such a great character in this. And Kathy Najimy, she's actually my favorite actress in this whole movie. To hold her mouth like that the entire time, priceless. You guys, I hope that you enjoyed this. And I hope that if we do another art challenge here on Art on the Creek, that you will feel compelled to join in on the practice because that's all it is, is just practice. I hope everybody has a spooky good time tonight and gets all the candy that you want. Take care, everybody. Have fun and be safe out there. Bye-bye.